Cosmonites are ready for what you have never seen before. This year is your year of supernatural advancement where the Lord will take you. This year is where you have never been before. In the precious name of Jesus, you are getting there. But you have to be ready. You have to be ready. And tonight is another opportunity that the Lord will start this weekend to push us into that path of advancement in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. As we take our seat, you are welcome tonight in the precious name of Jesus. The Bible says, God is no respecter of persons, but he respects readiness. He respects readiness. Praise the Lord. Before I welcome us from the word of the Lord, this is our first conference this year in 2019. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. And this weekend we thank God for what the Lord will do ahead of time. I want to welcome everyone in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Tonight we have our meet and through this weekend, uh, a man of God that is not a per se, a, is not a guest, is not a stranger, definitely. In the, is a, is what? Householder. So they say he's house, householder, praise the Lord. So we have an householder this weekend that traveled somewhere and just came back. So God be all the glory. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. This weekend we have Pastor Esther and Pastor Esther Obadari all the way from New York in our midst. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord for them. It's, an, it's a pleasure for me to welcome them back this weekend into our midst. They've been here several times, especially when we were in Oakland. And uh, they've been here from the beginning as a matter of fact. Now, somebody was asking me if it was Pastor Abraham's first time here. I said, no, of course, it's not the first time. Then I remember the message he preached in Capwell, the bread of life. I don't know how many of you were there that weekend. The bread of life. That was the title of the message. That message planted something in my heart since Capwell. We left Capwell 2019 January, 20, 2009 January. Ten years ago, we let's pack up. Well. So he preached that message ten, over ten years ago, the bread of life. And I would never forget. That is why I'm excited that this, this weekend, something will be planted in your heart that you will never forget. We thank God, Pastor Abraham is, I would say everything. It's more than district superintendent, definitely. It's just everything for the great assignment the Lord has committed to his hand all over North America, extended to Europe and even to Africa. And uh, personally, I will always have a lot to say about Pastor Abraham. Now, you are not going to find any finest pastor than Pastor Abraham. And I, I know what I'm talking about. In terms of uh, somebody living the call of God. Now, doing the work as a call with all signs of beauty. Now, it, Pastor Abraham did something that I will never forget because I haven't seen anybody done that ever since. When we just moved to uh, MacArthur Building in Oakland, this was 2009. So he came, and we were so blessed that weekend. He came with the general overseer, his brother, Dr. Paul Obadari, who I adore so much. And uh, they both came. We were so blessed. I doubt if both of them would go anywhere else other than their, their assignment for an entire weekend. And I remember when Pastor Abraham left, uh, Dr. Paul called me and said, can you extend my ticket to say extra day? I want to spend extra time with you. I said, of course. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, when Pastor Abraham was leaving, we gave him a check. He refused and refused and refused. He said, this is great work. This is great work. No, 
I said, no, sir, we have to, as part of principle. You know what he did? He gave it to the protocol to give back to me at the airport. <laughs> then the protocol came back and said, I said, why did you take it? I didn't know what is inside. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Bible said, not for charge. I will never forget. Paul said, not for charge. Without money. Not for charge. He sent it back. Of course, we have to hold the check back to New York because we have to do what is right. But I want to thank God for God's grace over his servants over many years. I've known Pastor Abraham personally now, I would say since 2002. That's 17 years ago. And uh, he has not changed. It's the same experience, the same knowledge I had of him 17 years ago is what it is up to today. He has remained very, very consistent. As a matter of fact, maybe you don't know, he was my boss in Atlanta. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So now, that, that is another thing for you to understand. But over the years, now the Lord launched us out to Dominion Life, which we had now. And God has used this man and this woman consistently over many years. They didn't close their door. They didn't cut off my phone when we left. And uh, even to this day, always a thing of pleasure to spend time together. Can we put our hands together for the Lord to honor this man of God? Hallelujah. I, I, I cannot, I, I can tell you, let, let, me, let me tell you a little bit more. Let me tell you more. Because we learn from everything. When I was in Atlanta, of course, Pastor Abraham is the son of our great father in the Lord that went to be with the Lord, Papa Obadari, many years. This weekend, we're going to have an opportunity. Somebody in the church requested it. They found out there are compilations of Baba's messages. So I called him about two days ago. I said, sir, I had their compilation for Baba's message. Can you bring some for us? Please, either you speak whatever is in English, is in Yoruba, I think. So you want to get it, because that is raw. Now, from the old man. But... Uh, it, it will be good for me to say this. Now, you know we are blessing Dominion Life, isn't it? Praise the Lord. When I was in CAC in Atlanta, one day, I went to the church in Tennessee. The general overseer sent me to the church in Tennessee to go, to, to go see. And uh, I went and I came back. Then it dawned on me that the, what is on the ground in Tennessee, at the Nashville, Tennessee church, will not have been the labor, the anointing of the resident pastor. It must have been the apostolic unction on the prophet. So then, I examined many locations. Let me tell you what I found out. No matter where that church is, sometimes you'll be able to explain it if we have a building. You may not even understand how it came to be, but it will always be building. Somehow, somehow, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes, the apostolic auction on the prophet, his father, is what is answering in all these locations. Not the work of anybody. For example, the church, the church that I pastored in Atlanta, they had me not so strong. You will wonder how these people got this land. They have beautiful properties in downtown Atlanta. As far as when I got there, they had another property somewhere, abandoned somewhere. Called, uh, it's Riverdale, I can't remember the name, but it's the name of the street, Flash Rose or something. One property just, is ne nobody has gone there for years. Just there. You will wonder, what kind of unction is this? Wisdom. When this church started, then we have to tap to that grace. We start with hundred dollars. We send hundred dollars check to the prophet in New York. We sent to his office to put in Baba's account. Uh, many people have asked, okay, what do you do? How do you cheaply get building? How do you get what you want? What you call the building? That is the secret, people of God. We started sending that check, hundred dollars to tap into that grace. I think sometimes we increased to two fifty. We started sending it, and we're sending it on the man who went to be with the Lord. So I I'm talking now about grace. I'm talking about grace. Now, are you, you can tell me that there is no building we have bought that is not a miracle. There is none. 
that it is not a miracle. I shared something in the church yesterday. I, I, I'll share with those that were, because of those that were not here. We have a wonderful property in Stockton, right? We bought that property two years ago. Now, a couple of months ago, T-Mobile came to us. They want to plant a tower. Who cares about a tower on the two acres of land? They're going to put a tower, an antenna. Now, are they going to, we have a 30-year mortgage, then they, will, they want a 30-year contract. So by the time we apply what they are giving us for the antenna, we will only subsidize the two acres of land with $850. So, talking, talking about grace, we will only had, a, we are the ones saying, no, we don't want to enter 30 years contract like that. What if, what if, no, can we break it down? We have 30 years mortgage, two years is gone, they want 30 years contract, they're going to pay 60% of the, of the mortgage or 70% of it. We only subsidize with 800 talking about grace. Now, I am saying all of this to know some history of grace over dominion life. And we thank God because tonight we have a seed, direct seed of that great prophet, even this weekend in our midst. Now, it's not just here because of that. It's here because I have recognized the hand of God over his life. I don't expect anyone's life to remain the same after this weekend. In Jesus' precious name. Let's put our hands together as we take our seat. One more time. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you, Pastor Esther Obadari, for coming. I specifically requested for her to, to come. Praise the Lord, because it's always good to see her. Hallelujah. John chapter 5 and verse 1. I said earlier on, will you be ready? After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a, at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there in a, long, in a condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? So what Jesus was saying is that, are you ready? to be made well. Are you ready? The Bible says he knew he had been long, he had been there for a long time. So Jesus asked, are you now ready? Because I know you've been here for 38 years. Now, it is one thing for God to have something he wants to do in somebody's life. Then it's another thing for that person to be ready. Hallelujah. My prayer is that this weekend you'll be ready in Jesus' name. Now, the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to pull me into the pool. Now, he did not recognize who was speaking. He was making excuses. This weekend from tonight, I want us to shatter all excuses. Because God will do what God says he will do. Now, you are going to end up this year in a place that you have never been before in the name of Jesus. Some of us will experience God this, this year the way we have never, we have never imagined in the precious name of Jesus. But God is going to use the instrumentality of the word. God always convey his power with the word. God always convey he always convey his power with the word. When the word goes forth, the power of God goes forth. That is why there is nothing compared to God's word. We had yesterday, the word of God is God's documented voice. The word of God is God himself speaking. And I know this weekend, this same God is going to speak to somebody. And I know that person in you in the, is you in the name of Jesus. 
I know that as the word of God comes this weekend, your life will never remain the same. Nothing is compared to the word of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44, the Bible says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and eat, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the entire field. You want to buy every opportunity of God's word with your time this weekend. You want to come expecting, you want to come prepared, you want to come anticipating that something is going to change in your life. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank God for the signs and wonders and proofs that has followed the assignment, the call of God over his servant. Now, he's not here tonight because this weekend because of any personal relationship. He's here because the grace of God is over his life. And that grace is speaking all over these places. And I know that grace will speak in your life in the precious name of Jesus. Now you are going to with the joy of the Holy Ghost and put your hands together for Jesus. As I bring up God's servant, come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord as Pastor Abraham comes up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All over the world, His Spirit is moving. All over the world, as a prophet said, it should be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation.
worship you. You are the wonderful God. And it is unto you that we have come. You are the Lord that we raise. You are the Lord that is lifted. All other men. All other things. All other things. We are nothing before you, O God. You are the good Lord. You are the Lord who moves your people from low Diba. Hey, we bless your holy name. Let your word have a place in our heart, oh God. Every member of Dominion Life Christian Center, every step you take is a step of dominion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. All glory be to God. All honor be to Him. I want to thank God who has made it possible for us to be here with you this weekend. We know that it is God's doing. And so we give Him praise. We are grateful to God for the angel of the house. Pastor, uh huh. He, it should be more than that. It should be more than that. It should be more than that. Let's give it up for the man of God, the woman of God. Let's give it up and praise God for them. Yes. It is the spirit of dominion in them that is uh, radiating over all of you. It is because they live in dominion. That's why everyone here is able to live in dominion. Yeah, because it, the anointing comes from the head. So to God be the glory. Thank God for you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you for leading God's people in dominion. Thank God for all associate ministers, all deacons and deaconesses and choristers and my sister. Oh, Lord. And everybody, don't let me start singling people out. But I love you all and I appreciate every one of you. And my wife, God bless you. Thank you so much for letting us come together. This weekend is a weekend of blessing. Please let us be seated. Supernatural advancement. Can you say supernatural advancement? Can you say, shout supernatural advancement? That is what I am going to begin to experience. Uh huh. As a man thinketh, so he is. Supernatural advancement. Two words put together. The first one is supernatural, and the other is advancement. The word supernatural is defined I actually I looked it up in dictionary.com what is this <laughs> it says the word supernatural is relating to or being above or beyond what is natural What is unexplainable by natural law? What is unexplainable by natural phenomena? That which is going to happen to you, that is going to happen in my life, that uh, you cannot explain how it happened because it defies all natural laws. That's what we're waiting on the Lord for this weekend. And we're going to have it in the name of Jesus Christ. It says supernatural. The word supernatural, we can also use the word abnormal. Uh -huh. And this characteristic can only be found in God. That which the people around you will not be able to say they did for you. 
that which you are not going to be able to say it's because I did this and I did that and I did that. That which only God can do. That's why I sang the song, the Lord that does what no man can do. How excellent is his name. It is unto this God that we have come this weekend. And he will show forth because he never fails. Only God does the supernatural. He is the only one who can do it. Hallelujah to his name. You know, I say hallelujah because we are connected to him through Jesus Christ. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, you are connected to God the Father. And so you can expect the supernatural. Yes, you are one of those who will experience the supernatural. And all praise shall go to God because of you. Turn with me, let us take a look at some of the work that the Lord God has done. Job chapter number 26, from verse 17, I mean verse, four, verse 7 through 14. Verse 7 to the end. Job chapter number 26. We're talking about the word supernatural and the God that does supernatural. The Bible says, God stretches the northern sky over an empty space and hangs the earth on what? Nothing. Ah, I think that's supernatural. The earth in which we live. Well, we traveled uh, six hours, uh, maybe 50 minutes. When we're going back, it's five hours something. I don't know how that works. They say tailwind or this wind or that wind, right? But all hung on, guess what? Nothing. These light fixtures that we have here, they are hung with something. The uh, uh, screens are hung with something. That's the only way they can stand. The earth. And we're all living in it. With our different weights and heights. And And so if God can hang the earth on nothing, definitely he can handle your matter. Definitely, he can handle your matter. Definitely, he can handle your matter. It's the word of the Lord right here. Now, let's read more. He wraps the rain in his thick clouds. And the clouds don't burst with the weight. As, as we were moving from JFK... And the thing was going up, and it was doing in the thick cloud until it gets to a point where it sort of levels out. And then at that point, if you dare look down, you see the cloud. But if you decide to look up, you see more cloud. And you're in the middle of nowhere, and you're going... And the cloud doesn't feel like falling on the earth. And the earth doesn't feel any weight of any cloud on top of it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Alaska Airline, maybe you can't go high enough. Let's get what the astronauts will do. So they, they take a shuttle. Now, we were up to uh, 38,000 feet. They go much higher. Huh? And they are still going. And they are still going. And they are still going. And when they get to a point and they stop and they say they want to explore, they want to research, they want to do, and there is still cloud above them. The Lord that doeth what no man can do. How excellent. 
the Lord that doeth what no man can do. How excellent is your name. That is the God we're talking about. And he's going to do wonders in your life this weekend. And, 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 and with all that, because if we, if we can't really think through what we see, then we're not going to be able to appreciate this supernatural God. I'm still talking about supernatural. Now, when the astronaut gets up there, and he does whatever he wants to do, put the camera he wants to do, put the satellite he wants to do so he can see down here and do the explorations that he, decide, he wants to do so he can give us some information and they still haven't reached this God yet. And God says, uh, this earth is my footstool. <laughs> and then you ask, you say, <laughs> one day I just woke up, I just woke up and I say, God, how, how long is your <laughs> because I, I, I cannot find on it. So with this type of powerful God that you are serving, you can expect him to be able to do some things that are called wonderful in your life. You will not be able to explain it. You will not be able to explain it because that's what he does. The unexplainable. Let's read on just the Bible. He covers the face of the moon, shrouding it with his clouds. He created the horizon when he separated the waters. He set the boundary between the day and the night. Something that none of us can explain how it was done or how it is being done. The foundations of the heavens tremble. They shudder at his rebuke. By his power, the sea grew calm. The supernatural God. By his skill, he crushed the great sea monster, the supernatural God. His spirit made the heavens beautiful. And his power pierced the gliding serpent, the supernatural God. These are just the beginning of all that he has done. Merely a whisper of his power. Who then can comprehend the thunders? Of his power. This is who God is. In Psalm 104, you and I we will find the Lord God Almighty telling uh, the, the He said, Okay, during the day, you man, you will wake up and do your thing. But during the night, the beasts will wake up and do their thing. That is God. And the beasts obey him. You said during the day we shouldn't come out? Yes, sir. When it's at night, their football field is open. They can come out. They can pray. And in the night, the lion will roar and say, Aah! And when the lion does that, he says, God, give me food. And God gives him food. The God that the beasts obey. That the waters obey. That the stars obey. God told the stars, you stay up there. And stars say, yes, sir. That is the Lord that is going to move in your life this weekend. We're not talking about what we can do. We're talking about what God can do. The owner of the heavens and the earth. 
the creator of all things, the one who made all things before he made us, so that all we are ever going to need have already been provided, so we will never suffer any good thing. That is the God that is moving in our place and in our hearts and in our homes and in our families and in our jobs and in our schools and in this ministry. You will experience him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the life of Elijah, he moved with fire. I call that supernatural. Let's take a look. Briefly, you know the story, but sometimes, you know, when we go back and just read, and then, and then the, 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 the power of the word just comes out, and then we believe it, and we expect it. First Kings chapter 18. From verse 30 and on. Through verse 39. We see the wonders of the Lord. The man said, let's make that, let's, we, okay, let's do it. Um, uh, uh, whichever, whoever's God answers by fire, that's the person that is going to be, that's the one that we're going to recognize as God. Don't worry. Pour water. Drench the whole thing. Call your God, I call my God. Whoever answers by fire, that is God. Why will an altar that is soaked, that is wet, why will it catch fire? Listen, everything that has thus far been impossible in your life, the Lord God that does supernatural is going to visit that area of your life and give that area of your life the life that it needs. The strength that it needs, the power that it needs, in the name of Jesus, your life shall be revived with the fire of the Holy Ghost, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is a miracle working God, the supernatural. In the life of Abraham and Sarah, you know what he did? God who does what one cannot do for self. God visited Abraham and said, well, by this time next year, Sarah would have a son. And the Bible says, Sarah, Sarah laughed it off. Now, you got to be kidding. Because on that natural phenomenon, by now that I'm 89 years old, by now that I'm 90 years old, you know, everybody knows that no 90-year-old is going to give birth to a child. I don't know what hopeless situation you found yourself. I don't know what you believe that can no longer work because um, natural laws say it can, it's not supposed to be. But I decree and declare over your life in the name of Jesus, in that area where you see hopelessness, God is going to bring you hope. God is going to give you life. God is going to give you joy. God is going to make you laugh. The Lord who does the supernatural. She laughed at it. But whether she laughed or not, you can read the story in Genesis 21. She gave birth truly. Wow. Nine. Can you imagine that? 90 year old woman. Right? Right? Isn't it laughable? Really? But you are serving a living God who has no boundary. Nothing can, 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 can tell him or limit him as to what he can do. He does what the Lord that do it, what no man can do. How it, as you are giving him praise, he's going to begin to do it in your life. How excellent is your name. That do at what no man can do. How excellent is your name. The Lord that do at what no man can do. How excellent is your name. Oh Lord my God. How excellent is your name.
Let's be seated. That song must keep coming. That you and I will know that there is a God in heaven who does what no scientist can do. Who is able to do what no friend can do. Who is able to do what no parent can do. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is his name. In the lives of the uh, 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 disciples, he told the sea to be calm. He said, peace, be still. They were afraid. As regular people should be afraid. Because of the waves of the sea, the tides were getting rough. And they were afraid for their lives. But God, God, God in Christ Jesus said, Peace be still. And the waters heard him. And the waters obeyed him. Is there a storm in your life terrorizing you? Some, some terrors show up in human beings. Some terrors show up at work. Some terrors show up in church. Some terrors show up in our health. Some terrors show up in our mind. But I speak peace over those terrors in your life. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace over the terrors. They shall cease in Jesus' name. They shall be calm in Jesus' name. They shall be shut down in Jesus' name. This is supernatural. When God speaks to a creation and the creation obeys him. You know, the disciples were wondering, what type of a man is this? That even the wind hears him. God is going to do some things in your life, 2019. Of course, you will not be able to explain it. The people around you will not be able to explain it. You know, the miracles that you, people of Dominion Life Christian Center, we enjoy this year you will not be able to explain it all you will be able to say is glory be to God 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 that's going to be your song in the name of Jesus Christ now the word advancement that one is simple it says an act of moving forward. An act of moving forward. Can you say, I am going to move forward? Now, when you, when you add supernatural to moving forward, <laughs> uh -huh. when God gets involved in your situation, When God, who alone is God, the one who has done it before, when he gets involved, as he's going to do this year, your moving forward is going to be quick. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be fast. It's going to be miraculous. It's going to be unexplainable. Abnormal moving forward. The co-workers will be wondering, when did she get here? You know, there, there are some promotions that come by the way of my certificate. There are some, some promotions that come by the way of I know the boss. There are some promotions that come by the way of uh, uh, they see me as a nice guy. But there are some promotions that will just come your way and nobody can tell as to why. Even your boss cannot tell why they did it. Yeah. And that's your portion this year in the name of Jesus. Supernatural. Supernatural. Supernatural moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward in your finances, moving forward, moving forward in your health, moving forward, no longer needing to deposit money for sickness because your health has moved forward. This is who God is. Please trust Him. 
You know, I believe the Spirit of God is in this place, surely. Earlier, when we were led to praise the Lord, the book of Hebrew chapter 4, num number 12, was read to us as our anchor scripture for the year. Is that right? Yeah? Saying in what? What does it say? It's powerful and sharper than two-edged sword. And my wife, I don't know, I don't know where she brought it up from. When we were in the aircraft, she just, she just said, uh, uh, you know, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, say the word God is uh, Okay? I said, okay. So to get here and have it be the same scripture that the church of God is reading, then I believe that God is up to something. Yes. And she explained to me, she said, you know, this, this, the word of God is, in, at least in this context, is saying that I am sharp enough. I can pierce through anything. That as far as a human being is concerned, I can, I can pierce through anything. It says, look, first it says, uh, I am able to pierce through the what? Soul and spirit. That which is not touchable. That which no one can see. That which only God has control of. The word of God, as you and I are hearing this weekend, is going to touch the area of our soul to give us advancement. Our spirit to give us advancement. How do you divide between soul and spirit? Between invisible and invisible? How do you divide between the untouchable and the untouchable? Only the word of God can do it. And he's going to perfect that in our lives this weekend in the name of Jesus Christ. Not only the soul and the spirit can the word of God pierce through. The Bible says also, Now try to imagine that for a moment. If there is any joint aching here, the word of God is piercing through the ache now and bringing healing to the joints in the name of Jesus. She told me, she said, the marrow that's really where life is. That's where blood is being manufactured. If someone is uh, suffering from cancer or some uh, blood disease, they can, if they, if, they, if they are blessed enough to flush their marrow out. Something good can begin to happen in the body of that person. The word of God has the ability to flush out the marrow where the blood is being manufactured. If there is any flushing that is necessary in the house tonight, the supernatural power of God is making it to happen in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God has that power. So when it's done with spirit and soul, it goes to joints and marrow. And there is another, there's a third. It discerns what? The word of God can already fish out what I am thinking. The word of God can already uh, see what you are, can already hear what you are nursing. And has the power to change it. Has the power to recondition it. To the likeness of God. That it may be well with you. Anyone here tonight who is thinking that you cannot make it. The word of the Lord is saying that you are going to make it. Because you are a child of dominion. You are going to make it. Because you are a child of dominion. 
You are going to make it because you are a child of dominion. Hey! One songwriter says, I will make it no matter what situation. God cares for me. He will never let me down. Come what may, I shall overcome. We have to believe the word of the Lord. That supernaturally some things are going to be shifting. And shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting. In the year 2019, things are going to begin to shift. Because God wants to advance you. Advancement in a manner that uh, your colleagues cannot say they're the ones who gave you the idea because they're not. If your colleagues gave you the idea and you followed through, then they can wanna they, they wanna get a, a tap on the shoulder. But this time around, it's gonna be God who's gonna get all the glory. It is God who's gonna get all the glory. It is God who's gonna get all the glory. Please be expectant. Yeah. We're not here to psych up ourselves. We're here to proclaim that we believe in the God of all possibilities. The God who does what no one, the Lord who will not share his glory with anyone. If we believe, Christ tells us we will see the glory of God. I am reminded of uh, one young boy. It's a, it's a, a, there's a, a TV documentary that I watched uh, recently uh, from Nigeria. I'm not sure if it is TVC uh, news station, but it's one of those uh, uh, television stations uh, uh, in Nigeria. And that there was a documentary concerning a, a, a young boy who, because the president of France recently visited Nigeria. And there, there's a young boy, uh, I'm not sure what age uh, is the... Oh, you saw it. Very good. He, he just made a, a, a drawing of that person, right? And it caught the attention of the governor of Lagos State. And so the governor of Lagos State actually invited him to that art exhibit with his drawing. And that president saw the drawing, right? And uh, they were just... Uh, so excited that this young boy was so talented and all that. And so the governor invited the, the young man and his family to, his, uh, to the governor's uh, uh, place, right? And thereafter, he gave them an apartment to live. What's spectacular? I'm talking about supernatural advancement. I'm talking about what you don't have control over, but God just brings into your life. Now, they, everyone in the, I think uh, three children, mom and dad, everyone, five people living in one room. That's all they had. It got so bad that dad couldn't even stay in that room. He stayed outside. And it, this has lasted so long to the point that it was get, the marriage was becoming hopeless because they don't think that they're going to be able to stay together. So poverty set in. And they were living in poverty. But the Lord God of the supernatural brought out something in the life of this young man just because he drew a sketch of, uh, uh, of, of somebody and, 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 and the governor took cognizance of that and said, hmm, this is a talented person. And for that reason, he said, I'm moving you, your family from this place where you're living to a flat of your own. Of I do not know how many bedrooms, but definitely not one like they used to have. And now, daddy came back home. Now mommy is at home. Now everybody living together. God will surprise you this year. God will visit you this year. God will do something wonderful in your life this year. God will promote you this year. God will provide for you this year. In manners that you have not prepared for. 
That young man didn't prepare for that. He never knew God was going to use him to be the one who will bring blessing to his household. To be the one that will bring his mommy and daddy back together. To be the one that will give them more rooms where they can live comfortably. But God did it without the boy preparing. Without the boy saying, I did it. Yeah. People like that, how can they ever move close to the governor? But God can move you close to those who must do what will bring praise to God. God can do it. Don't worry where you live now. Don't worry what you're going through now. Don't worry because you don't know folks up there now. God is going to bring you up. God is going to accentuate your life. He will make you known in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about, this is, okay, you say, okay, oh, the other one, the Salah stories in the Bible is long time ago. Okay, the Elijah story is a long time ago. But I now just narrated to you one that is uh, a, one of our own age that we have seen. And thank God, Pastor said he saw the same documentary. If God is still doing it, the God of yesterday, the same God is today. And he is forever. And so he will do yours. I said he will do yours. Let me just give you just a few examples before we stop of uh, some other people. David. I remember David. Yes. For Samuel chapter number 16. How did he get advanced? Was it not supernatural? From verse 14 through 23. The Bible tells me that this young man, David, was just a shepherd boy in his family. Yeah? He was the one who would go to the field and tend the sheep. And glory be to God as he was in the, in the bush or where, wherever that was to tend the sheep, he also would uh, play the harp. He would play his stringed instrument. And once in a while, mommy and I would be saying, uh, hey, man, as, as, as David was playing, the sheep would be there. Because it has to be, it has, I'm sure it has, it has to be. That's how people started to notice this boy got talent. This boy got talent. This boy, got, even if his family members knew that he got talent, they weren't ready to, they weren't ready to promote him. The first time he came to the public, the, the, the senior man said, hey, hey, go, go. Even, though, even though his brother brought him bread, yeah, he was for his own good. He said, go back home. You're a troublesome boy. You have come again. No, see. Eh? No, I know, I know. No, see. That's what family members will say. But he was enjoying playing for animals. He was entertaining animals. He was making animals dance to the tune. And God was watching him. And God was watching him. And God was watching him to a point where when the king Saul was getting mad in the palace, talk about supernatural uh, <laughs> advancement from playing for animals to playing for the king don't worry where you are playing right now don't worry who's dancing and who's not dancing right now but God is ready to advance you to a place where your playing will matter where your work will be known God is ready to do it and it will perfect it this year. Can you say this year? Can you say this year? Supernatural advancement is my passion. Whoever knew that one day David will be playing in the palace, 
God will make happen anything that he wants to make happen just to get you to the palace. When that boy was drawing, he never knew he would draw a president. When he was drawing a president, he never knew it would get to an art exhibition. When he got to art exhibition, he never knew that the governor will take note of it. When the governor took note of it, the governor could have just said, oh, nice boy. And then he goes home with nothing. But God said, yes, it is your turn. Some of you, you are the stars of your family. You are the one that is going to bring upliftment to your family. You are the one that is going to bring the light of your family to shine. You are the one that is going to bring spiritual empowerment into your family. And God will do it this year. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it this year. Supernatural advancement. One last one. It's one young man called Mephibosheth. We read his story in the Bible. He was living in hopeless land. The Bible calls the name of the place Low Deba. Low land, low place. Where no one can look for him. Place where people who don't matter, where they live. Place where people who have already given up, where they live. People who no one wants in the community where they live. People who have been banished. People who are runaways. People who don't matter anymore. That's where the young man was living. Even though he was a grandson of a king. He came from a palace. But because of circumstances of life, he became a runaway. As a matter of fact, he was crippled already. So what else can, what, whatever, whatever good can ever happen to me anymore? I do not know how long you've been in America. I don't know if you have lamented and say, is this all? Is this all that I came to do in America? Is this how my life is going to continue to run? And I'm aging, but I haven't seen anything yet. But the Lord God Almighty has sent me to you this weekend just to let you know that he who brought uh, Mephibosheth from Lodiba into the palace to begin to eat with King David, that God is your God. He's going to bring you up from Lodiba. He's going to advance you supernaturally. He's going to advance you supernaturally. He's going to advance you supernaturally. And this this your year. So, some may say it is the skill of David playing the harp that got him to the palace. Some may say it is the talent, the dreaming talent of Joseph that got him to eventually the palace. But you and I know that it is still all the supernatural move of the Lord God Almighty that made whatever it is that they had to become fruitful and to become noticed. But I want to also show you Mephibosheth. He had no talent. He had no dream. He had no skill. He had no hope. He had nobody. He had nobody. He knew nobody. Yet, God moved him up. You will make it in the name of the Lord. You will make it no matter what situation. God cares for you. He will never let you down. Come what may, you shall overcome. This is the word of the Lord for you and for me this yeah. I'm going to sing one more song and we're going to pray. Our time is up now. That song says, Unquestionable you are the Lord. Unquestionable you are the Lord.
wants you and I are serving the unquestionable God, the God of all possibilities, the God who can bring one from Lodiba to the palace, you will now begin to speak with all authority that in the name of Jesus, in the name of the unquestionable Jesus, I am stepping into supernatural advancement. This is my year. You will pray for yourself in my finance, supernatural advancement. In my health, supernatural advancement. In this church, supernatural advancement. In my family, supernatural. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray, declare that this year is your year of supernatural advancement. Your children will experience advancement supernaturally this year. The Lord your God is the unquestionable God. He is the all-powerful, the omnipotent. The one who knows and who does all things. Speak it with boldness. Declare it with boldness that this is your year of supernatural advancement. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will limit this church. Nothing will limit this church. Advancing in the supernatural. Advancing in the spiritual. Advancing in the financial advancing in the emotional advancing by the power of the supernatural goal this is your portion unquestionable you are my god unquestionable